Hey everybody, I'm John from Legacy Woodworking. In today's workshop, we're going to talk about adding tools to our tool database in the Vectric programs. This can be VCarve Pro, Aspire, or even VCarve Desktop. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our website. It's LegacyWoodworking.com. Come over here to this little three bar menu. You click on that one and we're going to go down to where it says Customer Support Files. Okay. This is on the right hand side of the page. We're going to click on that. And you're going to see here are going to be all the files that you can download off of our website. First, of course, are the table files. Those are great, but right now, not what we're after. As we scroll down here, we're going to find the Legacy Tool Library Database for the Vectric software. Let's click on Download, and we'll download that. Okay, the second one we're going to do is we're going to click on the Legacy Tool Profiles in the DXF format. Let's go ahead and download that as well. All right, now we're going to go ahead and minimize out our internet and open up our downloads folder. So here we have both of them. Now notice that they're zipped files. That's because they're pretty big. So we're going to right click on them and just say extract. And we don't need to show the files. That's just fine. And then let's right click on this one and let's extract that as well. Okay, now we have the two things that we're looking for in the unzipped format. So here in Aspire, we're going to go into our machine and go to our machine configuration. And right now, we're going to go over to our two machines. Now, I have a Bonk software here, and then I have a Delta software here. Now, if you have a 4x4, it's going to look like this, 60x50. If you have a 4x8, then it might be 100x50. And then, of course, you have here where you can type it out and name it however you want to. So we're going to use just the 4x4 one. Okay. And we'll go down to our tool pass tab and go to our tool database. Come over here to our pro delta. Now in my three by five, we're gonna go ahead and notice there are no tools in either of these. So let's go ahead and import in our tool database. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna go over here and go to this plus right here, add a tool. Okay, and then you have this one that says add a group. And over here you have import a tool database. Here is save a tool database and here is throw it all away. Let's go here where we can import. We're going to go to our downloads, go find our legacy tool library, click on that, hit open, and let's just say import. Okay, so here they all are. Now, here under our surfacing, we have surface planing, we have a three quarter up to an inch and a half. And as you hit the click the uh, plus button here, you're going to notice that they have a whole lot of tools. So a lot of times I'll keep them mostly closed down and only open up the one that, I'm going to be, that I will be working on. Okay, so let's click on surfacing here and let's say that we need to add another surfacing bit. If we go to my website here, if we're, we're going to look at this bit from Tools Today, it is the Amana RC2255, very popular surfacing for spoil boards, um, for slab leveling, it has a great it's a great tool, and if you'll notice down here in the bottom, you actually have a flat on the bottom of our sides here. Now that allows you to do the surfacing. So what we're looking for here is the D1, which is the diameter one, and that's the outside of this blade to the outside of the blade if it were on the other side. Now this has five flutes on it, so they're not going to be you know, exactly opposite each other. So you're going to have to just take the D1, we'll come down here and find D1, and that is two inches. And now if you look at our D, which is the full diameter, that's going to be two and a half. And again, that's because there's a difference between the edge of the cutter here and the outside edge of that flat surface on our insert cutters. Okay, one quick note about insert cutters are there, is that there are different um, tools, different inserts for different things. So if you're doing solid wood, you're going to want a different insert right here than you are for like MDF or chipboard or anything like that. MDF or fiberboard is going to be the most popular one. Um, but if you're doing, you know, anything like a slab table, then the solid wood is going to be the way to go. If you're not sure what you're doing, then you can start with this guy right here, the general purpose cutter. You're just going to, going to want to go a little bit slower when you're doing solid wood um, as if you were doing MDF. All right, let's go ahead and put this one in. It is a two inch diameter cutter right here. So we're going to go into here under surface planning and we're going to click on add. Okay. And we're going to rename this thing. So first type of tool. Okay. This is going to be an end mill. Okay. 
And now we're gonna start typing our stuff in. Diameter is two inches. Now what I like to do here is go back to the website and I'm gonna take this description right here. A mana tool right there. RC22-55. This helps me remember what to order if I need it again. So I'm just gonna paste that in there. Okay. And up here in the top, we're gonna to edit this one. Okay. And the tool type, we're just gonna type in right here. Okay, and we're gonna type in a mana surfacing bit. Okay. I'm gonna hit okay. All right, so now you'll notice it says I'm on a surfacing bit, and we need to now put in all of the parameters. So first, number of flutes. There are actually five on this one, right? Now let's click on Create Settings. It's going to generate everything else. And we can come back over here and see what it has to say about this bit. Now the exciting thing about this, they don't really tell you a whole lot. So we can go to our questions and answers and say, hey, what are you doing? And you can kind of get an idea of what people are doing here. So I'm using an eighth inch per pass. Chip load of quarters per pass is 0.06. So we're gonna to try to get our chip load about right there. And this is one of the store owners, so he ought to know at least a bit of what he's talking about. So let's try to match this up to a 0.012 chip load. Okay. So what we're looking for here is we're gonna go with our spindle speed. It's gonna be way down, so somewhere close to 10,000. Okay. And right there we're at 003. And so our feed rate's gonna go way up. And on something like this one, honestly guys, I'm gonna go about 350 to begin. And you notice that we're not even close to the chip load where we could be. Okay, so let's bring it up to about, let's go 450. And I'm gonna call that close enough. Um, I'm gonna set my step over pretty aggressively. So I'm gonna get that up 45%. And uh, we're gonna leave that right there. And this is where I'm gonna begin. Now, this is for running MDF things like that. If I'm going to run hardwood, then I am going to slow down my feed rate, but I won't drop my spindle speed much more because of the torque curve on the spindle. All right. Now, of course, if you're using a smaller router, like a three horsepower liquid cooled, or if you're using another brand CNC machine that might be using just like a regular router, the spindle speed's going to have to stay up a little bit higher and I'm going to drop my feed rate down. So then this chip load isn't going to matter quite as much. Let's go ahead and click on apply. Okay, and our tool is now in our tool database and is ready to use. All right, the second way to add another tool is to simply draw it. So let's say we have a tool that we've just designed and we have a ball on the bottom that's gonna be, say a quarter of an inch. Okay, so there's our first part of our router bit. We're gonna come over here and just draw out our tool. The next thing that we have on this one is let's make this a half an inch okay. and we're going to take off this side here and this is going to go right there let's bring it out a quarter inch that way so let's go to our move relative in the x quarter inch mm, i don't like it let's go back an eighth all right and we have a little flat that's right between there Go to my note mode, I'm going to delete that off. So I have just half of my tool, grab those and put those all together. And what we're going to see here, if we mirror this to the left, is the entire cutter. When we're importing a cutter, by drawing it in, we import one half of the cutter. So we're going to select on this, we're going to go to our tool pass, tool database, and we're going to create a new place. It's going to be like form tools or test 200. We're gonna put a new one in there. So let's go ahead and plus right here, down here at the bottom. Okay, and this is gonna be a new tool group. Okay, and let's rename this group. And let's add into here, and this group, we wanna rename it. So let's rename this tool group, test tools for class because we're just adding this in. It really is not going to be anything we're going to use. Click on this one here. I'm going to say apply. Yep, definitely. Now here's our thing here. We're going to go down here. We're going to form tool. And it's going to take the shape that is selected on just the right-hand side. And it will mirror it across. And it's going to tell us that it's a one-inch diameter. Now we might call this tool John's fake tool because right now that's all it is, right? 
and in here our form tool is going to stay form tool diameter can't change because that's based off of the vectors that we just drew we can go to two flutes create our settings and we definitely don't want those settings so let's say 15,000 and we're going to be going at mm, probably 200 inches a minute and that's going to give us a 6,000 chip load six and a half so good enough for what I like with a one inch tool 15,000 is going to be nice so I'm going to go ahead and hit on apply and okay and now I have this tool in my tool database if you want to see what tools are inside of that aspire tool database you can take and click on this button import we're going to go to our downloads and go to that router bit profiles you're going to see all of the router bits that are in the tool database you can see those up here and we'll see what we can show you here they are and they're all in there the nice thing about this is they're all TXFs and you can use those in your drawing now if you have any questions about today's class uh, go ahead and drop me a comment below again thank you guys so much for being here part of our weekly workshops our phone number is 800-279-4570 and you can also email us at john j-o-h-n at legacywoodworking.com thank you so much we'll see you guys in the next one